Hey guys! I'm sure you're probably sick of hearing about the behind the scenes drama on Charmed by now, but I got a couple of requests to look a bit deeper into certain aspects, and there was also some extra stuff I wanted to address, so I figured we'd touch on it one more time before we move on to happier subjects next week. Speaking of, next week will be a highly requested video, so stay tuned for that. In these videos, however, we're going to discuss the various reasons why Shannon and Alyssa, and also Holly and Rose, probably all contributed to the on set tension behind the scenes. And at first I thought about just doing this all in one long video so all the information was in one place, but as I expressed in the last video, the way people will just believe whatever someone says without question is just so bizarre to me. Like, most people are going to tell a version of their story that puts themselves in the best light, and in some cases that translates into twisting events, lying by omission, or just straight up lying altogether, and yet so many people just seem to go, nope, they said it, so it must be true. So, I thought an interesting way to further illustrate the point I was trying to make in the previous video, that it's really easy to paint whatever narrative you want when you're the one controlling the information, would be to split this video into parts. One on why Shannon was probably difficult to work with, one on why Alyssa was probably difficult to work with, and a third one on the role Holly may have played in the conflict. I'm not going to bother doing one on Rose just because there's just not enough information there to justify its own video, but if stuff comes out in the future, we can definitely come back to it. But yeah, the idea behind splitting the videos up is that if you only watch one of them, then it's really easy to believe that that's all the information you need and that person was absolutely the problem. Case closed. But if you watch the others, then it kind of shows that maybe that initial person wasn't as bad as they were painted out to be, and maybe they might have had reasons for doing the things they did. My hope is that these videos will not only serve as a more cohesive reference for those who were wondering what happened behind the scenes, because there is a lot of scattered information. I thought I would uh, kind of make a one-stop shop for it, but hopefully they will also be a reminder that you shouldn't always take everything at face value, and that maybe sometimes it's good to question what you're being told and do a little more research or look into it a little bit deeper before taking a side. So, without further ado, let's talk about why Shannon might have been part of the problem. So, when I did my first video on the behind-the-scenes drama on the set of Charmed, I was very more biased towards Shannon because I felt like Shannon got most of the blame in a situation where it was two people who did not get along with each other. I didn't understand why Shannon got all the blame and Alyssa got nice and none. So in that video, I was explaining why I thought it, they were probably all part of the problem. But since the podcast has come out and between a lot of things that were said in that podcast and digging a little bit deeper into other things, I'm like you know what? I can kind of see where that was coming from now. So today we're going to walk back through a lot of that info with a couple other things I have found out since, which kind of supports the idea that uh, Shannon is probably not as easy to get along with as she might believe. So first we're going to touch on 90210, which is probably the obvious place to start, but it does show that Shannon's reputation for being difficult to work with was already well established in the entertainment industry before Charn was ever a thing. So while Shannon always paints herself as someone who is no worse than anyone else on set, in fact, according to Shannon, many people were worse and anything she might have done was just the same mistakes everyone makes growing up. And if someone had a problem with her behavior, well, that was their problem and not hers. But that sounds like BS to me. Yes, everyone makes mistakes, even more so when they're young, but that does not mean that you are not responsible for your actions either, especially when those mistakes directly affect other people and or your work. And it definitely sounds like that's exactly what Shannon's behavior did, negatively affect the other people around her, especially on the set of 90210. Shannon tries to deny it, but by everyone's account, but hers. Shannon did everything she could to make things difficult, from being late all the time, being very blunt and callous towards each other, fighting with her co-stars, although that's on them too because it takes two to tango, as they say, made filming difficult, like when she allegedly decided to insist on holding a cat in one scene, forcing the crew to only be able to film her face, and what seems to have been one of the final straws for the showrunners, chopping her long hair off midway through filming an episode, ruining the content and making everyone's job unnecessarily harder, and they ended up firing her from the show. So yeah, 
Shannon tries to make it sound like her firing from 90210 was undeserved and that everyone else was as bad and or worse than her, but for that to be true, it would have to mean that everyone else but her is making stuff up and it's like, uh, that's a lot of people who are apparently just out to make you look bad. And when you consider the fact that she tried to say the same thing about her exit from Charmed, it makes you doubt it even more. Competition and speaking of Charmed, one of the biggest sources of tension behind the scenes seems to have been a sense of competition between the actresses, something Shannon of course denies being responsible for. It's not her fault other people are jealous, you know? Which, wouldn't you know, seems to be her go-to excuse whenever there's conflict with her co-stars, but whatever. The point is that she claims that she was just doing her thing and trying to make the show the best it could be, and that made other people mad. But here are a few examples of how that might not have been entirely true. So first, the star. If you listen to Shannon's podcast closely and the way she frames certain incidents, it's easy to see that aspects of her attitude problem from 90210 carried over to Charmed, mostly in the form of ego and control issues. Shannon can't seem to help but mention that she was the one the network greenlit the show based on every chance she gets. You know, even though it was Connie's idea and Aaron Spelling, who had a great reputation for making hit shows, was already attached to the project and arguably had a much better reputation than Shannon at the time, but no, I'm sure it was all Shannon. Regardless, Shannon keeps bringing it up and it makes you wonder if she's like this 20 odd years after the fact, then I can only imagine the sort of thing she said back when she was still on Charmed. And I don't know about you, but if I had to listen to my co-star brag like that, then I imagine I would probably feel a sense of competition too, like I had something to prove, especially when you consider that Shannon seems to have something of a one-upper personality where she can't seem to praise someone else or mention their accomplishments without finding a way to praise herself or mention her accomplishments, which always seem to be bigger and better. For example, when Holly was mentioning her stuff cover photo shoot in the podcast, it's the one sexy magazine cover she ever did and clearly something that she's proud to have under her belt, Shannon almost immediately launches into all the covers she did and even manages to remind us that she was more sought after for covers because the show was greenlit based on her and she was the one with more star power. Yeah, it's got to be hard not to have your self-worth take a hit around that sort of energy, especially when one of the head honchos, Brad Kern, makes sure that the charmed poster hanging in his office is one of the original trio, and every time you see it, you're reminded that you're only there because someone else isn't. Can't imagine that feels good. Publicity photos. This one is definitely up for interpretation because no one can say for sure the reason behind it, but it was reported all the way back in 2001 that Alyssa took issue with Shannon demanding to be in the center of the publicity photos. Like I said, no one can say for certain if this is true or not, and it's easy to assume that Shannon being in the center was a network thing because they do tend to put the biggest star in the center of group shots. But if you just look at the group photo galleries for all eight seasons and let the pictures do the talking, it actually kind of supports the idea that it was a Shannon thing because after Shannon left, the biggest star would arguably be Alyssa. No. So it would stand to reason that she would be the one in the center of the majority of the photos. But strangely enough, the spotlight actually became a lot more balanced after Shannon left, with Shannon having been in the center of 17 out of 19 photos over the three seasons that she was on the show. Alyssa was in the center of 11 over 8 seasons, Holly was in the center of 15 over 8 seasons, and Rose was in the center of 14 over 5 seasons. So yeah, the one who was in the least amount of seasons was in the most amount of centers. So it could have been a network thing, but to me it definitely lends support to the idea that Alyssa didn't necessarily want to be in the center herself, she just didn't like that Shannon demanded to be. Pay discrepancy. I had to learn how to spell this word for this section because, as it turns out, I did not know how to spell discrepancy, so uh, that was a spelling lesson for me. But according to Shannon herself, when Alyssa found out that Shannon made more than either her or Holly thanks to being the, quote, star of the show, she went to the higher-ups and tried to negotiate for more pay, which Shannon clearly does not approve of. And the thing is that Shannon claims that this pay discrepancy was so minor that it was, quote, barely worth a conversation, but I highly doubt that for two reasons. 
One, it always seems to be the people profiting from a pay difference who claim that it's not that much. I wonder if Shannon would have been saying the same thing if the roles were reversed and she was the one making less money. I somehow doubt it. And two, if the pay difference was really as minor as Shannon claims, then why did she care if Alyssa wanted it to be more even? And not only did she care, she actually went to her lawyers about it, who then went to Aaron Spelling and tried to tell him that he couldn't do that. So yeah, either the pay difference was a lot more than Shannon wants us to believe, or she just didn't think anyone should earn as much as she did since she was the star. But in any case, that was a fantastic way to feed into a sense of competition. Attitude Shannon says that her parents brought her up to have an opinion and express it, and this seems to have translated into the idea that anytime Shannon doesn't like something, she says so. Which isn't exactly a bad thing as long as you make sure that you pick your battles, that you try to be respectful, and that you make sure you're willing to hear opinions other than your own. But considering the fact that several people, including Shannon, have mentioned that she had a habit of being rather blunt in these opinions, I doubt it was Shannon's opinion that offended people and more the way she chose to express said opinions. And I imagine this happened fairly often on the set of Charmed since Shannon says that she didn't even really learn the art of diplomacy until she was in her 40s, which was long after her time on the show. So it definitely feels like Shannon had no problem being blunt, which let's be real, that means rude. And if you had a problem with it, then too bad. And another thing I think is very curious is that Shannon characterizes her objections on set as constructive or being a strong woman and using your voice. And yet, she turns around and refers to other people's grievances as complaints and speaks of them with such disdain that it definitely suggests that Shannon might be one of those people that believes that she's always right and anyone who disagrees with her is wrong. I mean, even when she speaks to one of her longtime best friends, she still manages to sound kind of condescending at times. And personally, and this is just speculation, so take this with a grain of salt, but I think the one thing Shannon just can't stand is not being in control of a situation. If you listen carefully to what she said about the early casting on Charmed, she said that, So I was already committed to the project, and Aaron and I made a calculated decision to take only Holly for Piper and another girl, Dana, for, for Phoebe. And it's like, so the show hadn't even been picked up or started filming before Shannon had started making power plays using her, quote, star power, a phrase we know stuck with Holly for a while, to force the network to take the two actresses she approved of for the roles of Piper and Phoebe. I'm not sure what happened to Dana, but she was replaced by Lori Rom, who Shannon seemed very happy with, and I wonder if that's because she had a hand in choosing her for the role. But then Lori left due to a religious conflict, and Charmed had already been picked up, so the showrunners had to scramble for a new Phoebe, and Aaron called up Alyssa Milano and asked if she would be interested, and as we all know, she said yes. And I think that might have been where the first wrinkle in their relationship appeared. Shannon did not pick Alyssa. Alyssa was picked for her. And given everything else we've heard about the situation and how Shannon handles things she does not agree with, I'm willing to bet that the third sister being portrayed by someone she did not pick nor approve of left a bad taste in her mouth that she never quite got out. Partners in Crime this section will focus on Shannon's relationship with BFF Holly Marie Combs, who she was friends with long before Charmed, and they described themselves as terribly compatible, which I believe. They seem to think along the same lines, down to hating people the same, and I definitely sense some mean girl energy from the two of them. They both have been unnecessarily petty towards Alyssa and definitely gives you the sense that Alyssa might have been right on the mark when she said that the set sometimes felt like high school, given that from Holly and Shannon's own perspective, they seem to have made it into an us versus her sort of situation, and since they had been friends for such a long time, they definitely thought alike, and I guess by season three of Charm, they decided they were going to do the adult thing, and rather than try and talk about their issues, they would just both ice Alyssa out and refuse to speak with the mediator that the show tried to bring in to remedy the issues the actresses were having. Holly said it was none of his business, but it's like, um, 
It's not like you guys are taking steps to fix things, so what did you want them to do? And unfortunately for them, they seem to have seriously miscalculated because Alyssa decided she wasn't going to play their little games anymore and instead decided to document every time she felt uncomfortable on set and bring it to the mediator. Then apparently went to the higher-ups and pretty much told them that it's Shannon or it's me, and if you choose her, I'm gonna sue you for creating a hostile workplace environment, and so they gave Shannon the boot. And and see Holly and Shannon try and paint this as totally undeserved. Despite having so many issues between them that it affected their work, notice how in the final episodes of season three, Shannon and Alyssa are kept apart from each other as much as possible? In Luke Who's Barking, Prue turns into a dog, so Alyssa's scenes are mostly with this gorgeous doggo. And then in the finale, Phoebe goes to the underworld in search of Cole, so she and Shannon have like one or two scenes together the whole episode, and even though Shannon directed it, so they were probably together a lot, my point is the problem was to the point where they almost couldn't work together, but Shannon and Holly are over here trying to make it sound like things weren't really that bad, and the problem definitely wasn't them, because Holly insists that. And what's funny is that by today's standard, it wouldn't even qualify, because there were no onset, you know, brawls. There was no either even like harsh words exchanged. It was all behind the scenes. It was all in a trailer. It was nothing that anybody or any of our guest stars ever noticed or noted. While Shannon is over here saying. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, listen, I, I lived a, you know, a year after that sort of replaying everything in my brain and really like trying to find those moments where we and I couldn't find them. Like there was no, like we never had it out. Like we never. Not privately or public, public. Right. Right. I don't ever remember being mean to her on set. Of course you don't. Probably because you weren't outright mean to Alyssa. You guys just had this click and she was on the outside and you made that known by being unnecessarily petty towards her. And there's even some public evidence of this, like how when Alyssa was asked about Charmed on Watch What Happens Live, she said it sometimes felt like high school, causing Holly to poke fun at Alyssa for not having gone to actual high school, with Shannon finding this apparently hilarious. Whether somebody wants to say that that's high school, their their definition of high school, or maybe what high school was like for them, mm-hmm. versus somebody else just saying like, eh, you know, sometimes you don't always get along with the person 24 seven that you work with. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. She didn't go to high school. What are we talking about here? <laughs> Which is pretty ironic considering you think Shannon, the one who talks about being the consummate professional and how she worked to support her family even from a young age through acting jobs, would not have laughed at that considering Alyssa did not go to high school because she was busy working on TV and film sets. Just like a lot of young stars, including Shannon, have done. So... That whole thing was just an unnecessary pot shot on their part, and also, notice how despite their issues, Alyssa has never publicly badmouthed any one of her co-stars and is still very complimentary of Shannon as a person and a professional. And yet, little miss I'm too old for drama is over here like, Say three nice things about Alyssa Milano. <laughs> That's positive. Um, she's pretty. Um, uh, uh, she's pretty. Um, uh, she's pretty. And it's like, really? You couldn't come up with anything else? That she's a good cook, that she's a good actress, that she loves horses, just like you and Holly? Nothing? But no, you're not into pettiness, right? So yeah, Holly and Shannon can insist all they want that they were never mean to Alyssa and that they hold no grudges, but A, to this day, Alyssa remains the only one to sit there and directly say, yes, this is what I did and I take responsibility for it. And also on the podcast, Holly referred to Alyssa going to the mediator and the higher-ups as stacking the deck. So no grudges, huh? Because you'd think that with 20 years of hindsight and Holly actually having had a good relationship with Alyssa for most of it, that it might mean that she knows that Alyssa is not a bad person and was probably just as tired of the drama as they claim to be. She just went about handling it a different way. But when they say the deck was stacked, it makes it sound like they absolutely blame Alyssa, which is what everyone's saying, by the way, when it's like, okay, look, 
we weren't there, so we can't say for sure what happened, but from Shannon and Holly's own version of events, it does not sound like they were very approachable, and they could have gone to the mediator themselves at any time and actively chose not to. In fact, they didn't even have to go to him. They could just ask that he be present while they discuss their issues. Believe it or not, it does help sometimes, but yet somehow Alyssa is a villain for recognizing that working with the mediator, therefore the network and their bosses, rather than two women who insist that they were not the problem, was probably the more viable solution. Honestly, if I were in her place, I probably would have done the exact same thing. And I can't help but wonder if part of the reason they're so mad is that their choice to ice Alyssa out was to teach her her place, if you will, and it ended up backfiring in a major way and they ended up having to reap what they sowed. And, you know, then there's the hospital thing. If you haven't heard, Shannon claimed on her podcast that Alyssa and her mother, Lynn, caused this weird divide in her friendship with Holly and made it very difficult for Shannon to visit Holly after she had surgery, to the point of, quote, blocking her. And I just have a very hard time believing that. I mean, outside of the medical care team, it's usually only a spouse, immediate family, and a power of attorney of some sort who has any say over a patient's visitors. Alyssa and Lynn were none of these, so it's very hard to believe how they apparently blocked Shannon, Holly's longtime friend, from being able to see her. I feel like the people who said Shannon probably just didn't visit Holly because she doesn't like hospitals were probably onto something, and I imagine when Holly was clearly upset over her absence, she saw an opportunity to explain not only said absence, but also drive a wedge between Holly and Alyssa by claiming that it was Alyssa's fault that she did not visit, which seems to have worked because after that, Holly seems to have distanced herself from Alyssa, and together she and Shannon pretty much iced Alyssa out. and. Well, we know how that ended. So yeah, if someday Shannon comes out with a plausible story as to how two people who should have had no say in who visits Holly in the hospital managed to block her from visiting, then I will absolutely apologize and say I was wrong. But as it stands, I don't buy it at all, and I think it's just one of the many indicators that Shannon will not take responsibility for anything, but can and will always find a way to blame it on someone else affair. Something else that seems to be flying under the radar is that Holly all but confirmed the long-standing rumors that Shannon had an affair with co-star Julian McMahon? Yeah, who was married at the time. And apparently, this was a source of tension on Charmed, since I'm sure we all know that Julian played Cole, who was Phoebe's love interest in season 3, and it's rumored that Shannon wasn't exactly over the moon to watch Alyssa making out with her boyfriend. Like, what is a nice way to refer to a cheating relationship? I don't know. All I know is while it's very difficult for me to feel sorry for her at all, given the situation, in fact, I don't. There's plenty of fish in the sea. Find one that doesn't have a ring. And the same concept applies to Julian. But anyway, my point is that I'm sure this was a source of tension coming from Shannon on set, especially given what Daniel Harris had to say about her experience on Charmed, which leads us into our next point. Talk scary to me. In the season one episode, The Fourth Sister, Daniel Harris guest starred as Aviva, which by the way is such a pretty name, a troubled teenager who tries to befriend the sisters. Daniel never had much to say about her appearance on Charm that I've noticed, but a while ago she and Scout Taylor Compton, another actress who guest starred on Charmed in the form of fairies, started a podcast of their own, Talk Scary to Me, where they talk about a variety of topics, and in episode nine landed on the topic of being uncomfortable at work. And according to both of them, not only were the girls always fighting and everyone knew it, so much for Holly's insistence that it wasn't that bad, huh? But she mentioned Shannon in particular was not that nice to her, especially after a guy on set took interest in her, and unbeknownst to Danielle, that guy was Shannon's ex-boyfriend and he was using her to make Shannon jealous, which apparently worked because according to Danielle, Shannon was already not very nice to her, but once that happened, she kicked it into high gear. 
But because there was a lot of fighting between the girls and, and uh, like I didn't know who to talk to, who yes. to pick, you know? Yeah. It's so, like if I pick Shannon, then Holly's going to be mean. And yeah. then if I pick Holly, Shannon's going to be mean. It's so and funny how you like knew that. Right away. <laughs> right of away. course. Yeah. And Alyssa. They don't was, hide it. No, they don't give a shit. Um, but I, so the, the, the first AC, first assistant camera guy was super cute. Um, uh, was chatting with me, chatting with me. He was the D, he was the DP son. Okay. Um, and you know everybody had lunch. We had like I had a nice trailer, and then they had like a little like table outside of the trailer where I ate. Yeah. You didn't eat like with crew. It was like everybody had their own little yeah. thing, you know. Yeah. So um, so I was eating out, and then he came up and you know wanted to sit. And hey, do you mind if I join you? And I was like, sure. Anyway, we started chatting, and and Shannon kept walking by, and like she was not very nice to me anyway. And then but she kept walking by, like I kept getting mad dogged. I was like, what is going – I don't understand what's going on. Anyway, um, anyway, long story short, uh, what I didn't realize is that the AC was sort of using me to get back at Shannon. He had been her boyfriend <gasps> oh, for like 17 months or something, like crazy, like over a year, like a year and a half. Whoa. And every single time – so no wonder they were awful to me. Yeah. Because I was sitting – having lunch with him. And Shannon was, that's why I was getting stink eye. Yeah, but like, you don't know that. I had no like, idea. You, you don't know that. No. You know? What else was I going to do? Dude, could you kind of tell, like, even by watching that show that the women were not so nice? I remember leaving that show saying, if they offered me $100,000 an episode to be a series regular, I don't know if I would do it. Yeah. Because it just, I just felt sick every day. Yeah. I don't want to be in that environment. Yeah. You know, I think it got bad. I heard it got better when Rose came on the show, but I don't know. I don't know her either. So I yeah, don't know yeah. what the situation was, but who wants to, who wants to be a part? So yeah, that not only supports the idea that Shannon would not have been happy to watch Julian and Alyssa making out on set, but Shannon can sit here and continue to claim she wasn't the problem all day long, but clearly there is evidence to the contrary. Lies. And probably the single most important reason why you shouldn't just believe everything Shannon says are the lies that she has publicly told, mainly the ones about why she left Charmed in the first place and why she never came back, and yet somehow everyone is just fine with this. Like, Shannon says, The, the narrative that I quit was assigned to me by other people. It wasn't assigned to me. I didn't assign it to myself. But she also has said... Now for the first time, Shannon speaks openly about walking out in this Entertainment Tonight cover story. There was too much drama on the set and not enough passion for the work. You know, I'm 30 years old and I don't have time for drama in my life anymore. Hi, um, I was just wondering if you were surprised when you were the sister to be killed off in Charmed. Um, I wasn't because it was something I'd been asking for from the beginning of the third season that uh, I was saying, I think it's time, you know, and it's time for me personally. And it, I thought it was time for the show because a show like that needs to stay fresh um, and we can't constantly have us escaping demons and, and bad things. Um, and I, I, especially back then, because I was much younger, I had a tendency to get very bored. Um, and as an actor, I always like playing different characters. So playing the same character all the time was extremely, extremely difficult for me. So no, it was, you know, it was a, uh, they weren't exactly thrilled when I was like, eh, I gotta go. <laughs> so I'm just over here like, how? How is everyone just giving her a pass on this? It's not like she was forced to lie. In fact, Holly not only said herself in a TV Guide interview that was published before season four started airing that Shannon had tried to quit but was told no, but she also went out of her way to say on the podcast that she made it clear to the powers that be that Shannon would get to choose which story got put out about her exit. And so she chose to say that she quit. She says she did this on the advice of her team who said that her career would not survive another firing, but she literally starts off by admitting that she's lied this whole time. Why would anyone in their right mind believe her about anything else, let alone saying that it was the fault of her team? Especially when you combine it with her habit of passing any sort of blame off of herself onto others. And even if it was true, she is not a child and she was not under any sort of NDA that forced her to keep quiet. And she not only went with the story, but she elaborated on it. She made it sound like it was all her idea. And she is responsible for what came out of her own mouth. And 
I know people can make an argument for, oh, that's a rock and a hard place. You know, you have to choose between the truth and your career, sort of. And I almost understand that. But, you know, the funny thing is that lie isn't even the worst one. This one is. When they asked me if I would come for the finale. You said no. I said no. <laughs> and I didn't even ask, like, how they would bring me back because it's it's a fantasy world. So obviously there's yeah. tons mm -hmm. of different ways to do it. And... um. The, the, the answer, and as you all know, I'm an incredibly direct and honest person, so I should be giving a much more political answer, but I'm not going to. Um, the reason for the season finale that I didn't is because, honestly, the way that they, they sort of wanted to bring Prue back into it was, was just not authentic, and there was nothing uh, interesting and good, and it wasn't true to the character, so uh, that's why I said no. Like, how is no one talking about this? This whole time, Shannon has lied and said she did not return for the finale because of the way it was written, that it wasn't true to the character. And then she turns right around in the podcast and goes, nah, I didn't even ask how it was written because it didn't matter. I wasn't coming back. It's like, what? Don't get me wrong. Shannon does not owe anyone anything. She is not obligated to associate herself with Charmed ever again if she doesn't want to. My issue is that once again, Shannon chose to lie to people, once again chose to pass the blame for a decision she made, and no one says anything about it. It's all just okay, and we'll believe anything else she says for the simple fact that she said it, so it must be true. Are you kidding me? What kind of world do we live in? You have to believe the liar. No, I won't. Sorry, but no. And then there's Alyssa. After the podcast dropped, most people immediately flocked to Shannon's side and believed everything she said about Alyssa without question, which I clearly do not agree with at all. First, why are we believing everything someone who has lied over and over again on anything? And also, does anyone else notice the pedestal they keep putting themselves on? Like how Shannon and Holly both claim that they really loved and cared about the show, and Alyssa did too in the beginning. I mean, it was very important to me and I don't know how, I mean, it always was to both of us. It was always very important. And even to Alyssa in the beginning. It's like, okay, first, why is it apparently up to you to be the judge of whether Alyssa cared about the show or not, in your opinion, and or when she apparently stopped caring, in your opinion? And correct me if I'm wrong, but was she not just as much of a producer on the show as Holly was from season four onward? I'm not in showbiz, but from what I understand about producing, it definitely suggests that you care about the show. So, yeah, there's that. And the thing is, I have yet to hear something definitive about Alyssa being problematic on set. A lot of things that have come out feel like they need more context before we can properly judge. Like, for instance... Daniel Harris said that Shannon was mean to her and she didn't know who to side with because if she sided with Shannon, then Holly would be mean and vice versa. First of all, trouble in paradise between the dream team, huh? Doesn't surprise me, after all. Something people don't really seem to talk about is that Shannon and Holly had their own falling out a few years back and I really wish I knew why. Like, what was the final straw there? Very <laughs> slow. Have you been in touch with her since she's been sick? Shannon's um, yeah, okay. we were, uh, when she was first diagnosed, um, oh. I was there with her and, and through oh, the process wow. we had, we, you know, our relationship has had very many ups and downs that mm -hmm. people were not always ready to, um, but you know, we had a very long friendship considering who we were and the business that we were in. Um, mm -hmm. so even though we're not in touch anymore, I'm mm -hmm. still very proud of our relationship and, and what we had and how long we, you know, we supported each other through divorces and marriages and yeah. sickness and mm -hmm. health and all of it. Um, and it's sometimes a, you just get a little too close. And we, a, we got to the point where we were too close. Anyway, the point is that the only thing Danielle really said about Alyssa was that she felt Alyssa was trying to tell her what to do, like what side of the camera she was on. And I don't know, to me that sounds like while it might have annoyed Danielle, it might have also just been Alyssa genuinely trying to be helpful, which it does sound like Alyssa tries to be. 
She apparently gave Rose a welcome gift when she started the show, and when Holly's wedding dress didn't fit due to her body changing shape because of her pregnancy, Alyssa called everyone she could think of and got an arrangement of dresses sent to Holly for her to choose from, but we're expected to believe that she's just a selfish prima donna drama queen who doesn't care about anyone but herself? Okay. Even her conflict with Rose. I mean, you never really heard anything about them not getting along until politics get involved, and I even tried to find any article that might have mentioned them not getting along before the politics thing came up. I used the Google toolbar to set the search window between before Rose was even on the show to right before that stuff happened, and there was like nothing. When they talk about people not getting along, it's always Alyssa and Shannon, but nothing about Rose and Alyssa, or even Holly and Alyssa, really. And so, I can't help but wonder if Rose's issues with Alyssa actually stem from their time together on Charmed, or if Rose is upset with Alyssa over political stuff and was just trying to make her look bad. I mean, she says that Alyssa had appalling behavior on the daily and made the set toxic AF and that she cried every time they got renewed, which isn't anyone thinking it's a little weird that Shannon also went on to say that she cried every night of season two? Like, doesn't it strike anyone a bit odd that they both seem to have gone for the same phrase? But, uh, yeah, that's just speculation. Um, my point is, the only example Rose gave of this is that Alyssa apparently threw a fit in front of the crew saying, they don't pay me enough to do this shit. And I don't know. I feel like we'd need to hear more about what was going on at the time before we can judge that because I think we've all felt that way. And believe it or not, context does matter. Because like, if she had just said this on Tuesday and Tuesday seemed like it was a good day for a hissy fit, then that's one thing. But now, on the flip of that, let's say that this same instance happened while they were filming the mermaid episode. Alyssa has a phobia of water, especially deep or open water, so that episode seemed specifically designed to put her in a position where she would have been constantly afraid. And if she had said something like that then, then I think that would be super understandable. The point is, we do not know. So, yeah, one statement out of context is not enough to determine that Alyssa is a diva, end of story. But anyway, I just really wish people would be asking more questions about things that don't add up in the podcast instead of just blindly believing it all. It is so bizarre that everyone believes that this is 100% happened just because Shannon said so, even though she literally admits to lying to everyone for 20 freaking years. It's like, come on, guys. Do we really believe that Alyssa is just this manipulative monster that Shannon fell victim to and that she was fired from not one but two shows through no fault of her own? Give me a break. Even Rose admits that she had heard that Shannon was difficult to work with. Yes, she tried to play it off like, oh, we were not the problem. They were. It's just like, uh, you had to prove that you weren't bad like her? Uh, that definitely sends some red flags my way. Like, maybe there was some truth behind that. But the point is, as much as Shannon vehemently denies it, the conflicts on the projects she's worked with all seem to have her as a common denominator, so you would think that at some point she would stop and go, hmm, are they the problem? Or am I? I mean, there's never just one problem, but you know what I mean. But I guess, what's the point of doing that if you can just make a podcast saying it wasn't my fault and the entire world will just believe you, no questions asked? But at the end of the day, in order for Shannon's story to be accurate, there are a lot of people who are either A, lying, or B, trying to make events worse than they sound. And what's it going to take before people start questioning the one versus the many? And that's pretty much why I think Shannon was probably much more problematic on set than she would have people believe. But, really... I think the only way we're ever going to know what happened for certain is if Shannon and Alyssa are forced to sit down, face each other, preferably publicly so they can't lie about who said what, and get to the bottom of things once and for all. Other than that, it's just going to be a bunch of finger pointing and shifting blame and the complete mess it's been for the better part of 20 years. And at the end of the day, I still feel that each actress played a part wink in all of the problems that went on behind the scenes and you would think that everyone being in their 50s now would all stop acting like they're in high school and just take responsibility for their own actions apologize to each other and move on
So, thank you so much for watching. My voice is all but gone, as you can probably hear, but I really do hope you found the video entertaining and instructive, and that it helps clear up Shannon's role in the drama. Remember, this is just one piece of the puzzle. The other two are Holly and Alyssa, so if you want a full picture, I would highly recommend watching the companion videos of this one. Either way, I hope you liked it. Please let me know what you thought in the comments, and as always, I hope you have a wonderful day or night wherever you are. Bye!